In this video, I want to show you the mechanical operation of the platform that holds the, uh, the sun oven. I'll call this the bottom piece, this the base, and this the platform. There is a 12 inch lazy Susan that is sandwiched between the bottom piece and the base. A small DC gear motor, it's about 2 RPM, is used to move the base when I want to move the thing to track the uh, track the sun going from east to west. The reason I chose a little gear motor is because it's got a little bit of stiffness and it won't blow about when there's a gust of wind that might hit the uh, reflector panels. And also by using a small gear motor I can just apply a short pulse. It'll be enough to move the, move the uh, the base just a couple of degrees as it's tracking the sun. And I'll explain how I track the sun uh, in a later video. In addition, I can it'll move either direction. And it's when I want to uh, set the, the temperature to hold the program temperature, it, it will rotate 90 degrees toward the east and it'll hold that temperature and then move back to where it was. I'll explain that also. The other motor is a small stepper motor. And it, I had this stepper motor from a previous project. That's the main reason I used it. Uh, it rotates my little homemade universal joint, the bottom of which is attached to the shaft on the motor with a set screw, and the other half is tapped 3 8 16 thread. Now that is uh, used so I can attach the platform to the, to the stepper motor. Now this is a 3 uh, threaded rod and it goes through this pivot pin. And the reason I chose this combination of linkages was because I had a heck of a time trying to keep this thing from binding up when I was changing the angle of the platform. I also have a little nut here, a jam nut, that when uh, I get it all set I can jam that nut in and it will prevent the uh, threaded rod from unscrewing from the universal joint. The platform itself rotates about a 3 8 inch diameter steel pin. That steel pin goes through a routed out uh, slot in, in the base of this wood piece here that's glued to the platform and it provides a real rigid support. In addition I've got a couple of small diameter uh, holes here that I can put in a cotter pin just in case the, the, the rod might have a tendency to move back and forth. And that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of the mechanical part. I'll get into the electronics later. This box contains the electronics. I'll show the circuit board with the three switches and what they do and, and the connections for the motors and whatever. I'll get And uh, how I sense the sun. I'll get into that in the, uh, in the next video. This is what I use to monitor the sun's position. It's basically a long piece of aluminum that I painted uh, flat black. The sensors are four LEDs. These are uh, 10 millimeter clear lens LEDs that would normally emit a green light. These two vertical pieces here are used to cast a shadow over the LEDs unless they're perfectly aligned with the sun. I chose those particular LEDs because they will output as much as 1.6 volts at full sunlight. An LED is really a miniature solar cell if you want to look at it that, in that respect. Underneath I just monitored an additional plate to protect the wiring on the LEDs. I didn't, if I dropped it I didn't want those things to be damaged. Underneath on this end I have two air magnets that are secured to the plate with some super glue and then two brackets here that will be used to clamp it on to the corner of the solar oven. I had to come up with this longer bar mechanism because I wanted to make this removable from the sun oven first of all and secondly when it's, re when it's mounted if the reflectors are open they cast especially if the sun is low in the sky they cast a shadow so I had to extend this out from the back of the solar oven a ways so at a low azimuth or at a low uh, sun, sun in the sky I won't have a shadow over the sensors. 
But uh, they use, they track the sun very adequately. We'll, I'll fake it out with a flashlight, and then I'll show you how it actually how it actually works. The other removable or item is the thermocouple probe. Now I used a regular uh, steel probe, and I wanted to mount this thing inside the sun oven, but I always hesitated about drilling a hole through the oven walls. Well, I came up with an idea where I use a, I, I've, in my machine shop, I had some brass tubing, just a little bit larger ID than this probe, so it slips through that tubing. So I drilled a hole and then RTV'd the tubing into the inside of the oven, and this will go on the outside of the oven once I get some glue that sticks, and the probe will then slip through that into the oven. Then I have a small O-ring, and then I have a threaded coupler here. So when this is on the oven, I can tighten this up, and it, it'll clamp, clamp it to that so I don't get any leakage back out of the oven. I guess it pays to have a fully equipped machine shop for some of this stuff. I'll show how that mounts in the oven later, uh, but those are the two parts yet that uh, I have to uh, show you. Okay, we're ready to mount the LED uh, position sensors and the thermocouple. Notice on the corner of the solar oven, I epoxied a small piece of steel, so the magnets on the LED sensors can clamp to that. Take this, and it's on there aligned pretty much in the same spot every time. Not that it's all that critical, but uh, it'll, it'll just makes it a little more repeatable. Now on the oven you can see a little piece of the brass tubing still coming out of the edge of the frame. I wanted to do that instead of just having a hole through there because I didn't want the moisture to leak into the insulation inside the oven. Here's a thermocouple. Normally this now will be glued onto there. The thermocouple slips through and then I can tighten it up. And that's pretty much it. Uh, now we're good to go and uh, I'll show you how I can, using a flashlight, can fake out the movement of the, of the oven. Okay, I've turned on the oven and I'm going to shine a flashlight on primarily on the east-west sensor. And you can see the oven starting to move in that direction. There's a slight pause between moves. It's kind of hard to see, but the shadow was on the other side. Now, if I flip the sun over to this side, the oven's going to come back the other way. Now we'll get out of that mode. And it'll keep going until the oven is perfectly aligned. It should be pretty well aligned right here. Then what happens is it's going to sense the up-down. You notice it's moving, moving the oven that way because there's more light on this side, or the sun, I should say. And I have a pause. Now we'll bring it back on the other side. And it will drive the opposite direction. One more time and we'll be done. We'll bring the light so it's very close to parallel and it'll basically stop.